Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the top news of the Hindu newspaper. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that most of the students start reading the Hindu newspaper, and on the very first day, they try to read everything in detail, and that's why it becomes so boring that next day we don't even pick up that newspaper. So, in this series, we are going to follow incremental approach. Now, what is the meaning of incremental approach? It means we are going to read some component of news today, and then in the upcoming day, we are going to build up on that particular foundation, so that you don't have to remember these news. It will be stored in your subconscious mind automatically. Another thing is that for this series, you don't have to make notes. You just have to follow it daily, and then you won't have to remember it. It will be automatically stored in your brain if you are going to follow it regularly and with attention. So now. Let's start. First article is related to OHCHR. OHCHR stands for Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights, and it is in Geneva. Now, recently it was in news because it announced that it is planning to file an application in Supreme Court in the context of CAA, that is Citizenship Amendment Act. So there are two things. First is this Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights. It is in Geneva. CAA is the recent law made by the Parliament to provide the citizenship to the six minority communities from three countries, and the cut-off date is 31st of December 2014. Now, this OHCHR decided to approach Supreme Court of India. However, now we need to understand what is the response of Government of India. So, it should be noted that the Ministry of External Affairs. Has clearly mentioned that no foreign party has any locus standi on the issues pertaining to India's sovereignty. It means that this OHCHR is not even a party that is related to the CAA, and therefore it is not even related to the case. And it is India's internal matter, and we do not want any external intervention. Simple. Do not go into too much details. In the upcoming days, we will cover it. In more detail, envoy summoned after Iran slams Delhi riots. So let me explain the scenario. Actually, after Delhi riots, the foreign minister of Iran, Javed Zarif, because of the treat of Iranian foreign minister, Iranian envoy to India was summoned by Ministry of External Affairs, and we condemned the tweet by Mr. Javed Zarif. It should be noted that the foreign minister of Iran. Commented that this violence was organized against Indian Muslim. So India has clarified that we are investigating the matter, and India will not tolerate any kind of violence against its own people. So obviously, they, there is no need to have foreign intervention. This message was conveyed to the Iranian envoy to India. That means Iran's ambassador to India, and the name of ambassador is Ali Chegani. You don't need to remember the name, but For the sake of understanding, next news is related to river interlinking project. So the central government is working on a body for river interlinking projects, and the name of this body is going to be NIRA, that is National Interlinking of River Authority, and this will take up the interstate and intrastate projects. Interstate means between two states, and intrastate means within the state. So this body is going to be the nodal body for river interlinking projects. What is river interlinking? It means when two rivers are connected so that the excess water supply from one river can be transferred to the areas where there is a water scarcity. One such river interlinking project is Kane Betwa River Interlinking Project. Next one is related to NPR, that is National Population Register. So actually, some states. Has expressed concerns about NPR because this time the NPR is going to collect the data based on 21 parameters. Last time it collected data on the basis of 14 parameters. So that is why some states are expressing their concerns in this context. It should be noted that it should be noted that NPR exercise is going to be started from 1st of April and it will be conducted along with census. And as per the reports. For the first time, the NPR will collect the information about mother tongue. 
Next is related to mercy petition. So recently, mercy petition of one of the convicts in Nirbhaya's case was rejected by the president. I have uploaded a special video on this topic. You can watch that. And for brief, let me just tell you the sequence. So there is a sequence of review petition, then curative petition, and then mercy petition. So this one was rejected by the president of India. Previous legal remedies has already been exhausted by these convicts. Next is government imposes curbs on drug exports. Now before we talk about this issue, let me just tell you simplified information. Actually there is a term API that is active pharmaceutical ingredients. So this API are used for making medicines. So it is a raw material for making medicines. Now this API is very crucial and in case of India we import a lot of active pharmaceutical ingredients and approximately 70% from our imports of API are from China. Now because of coronavirus there is a problem in import supply. Also because of coronavirus there is a increased demand. So now government has imposed the restrictions on export of these medicines. Why we imposed restrictions because if we are going to export it, there is a possibility that there can be scarcity of these medicines in our own country because of improper supply of API from China. So recently DZFT that is Director General of Foreign Trade notified about the restrictions. Now this DZFT is under Commerce Ministry. It should be noted that India is a major source of world's generic drug supply and approximately 20% are supplied from India itself. And for that, India is dependent on the API from China. Black carbon levels spike at Himalayan glaciers. Now what exactly is black carbon? Black carbon results from the incomplete combustion of fossil fuels and biomass. So it is from incomplete combustion. Now it can absorb about a million times more energy as compared to CO2 that is carbon dioxide. And it is the second largest contributor to the climate change after CO2. However, it should be noted that it is short lived as compared to CO2. Now, let's understand this event. See, because of incomplete combustion, there will be generation of black carbon. Now, this black carbon will deposit on the glaciers. And since it absorbs more heat as compared to CO2, so these glaciers will melt because of the heat absorbed by this black carbon that is deposited on these glaciers. And that is why because of the heat absorption, these glaciers are melting. It should be noted that India is the second largest emitter of black carbon in the world. So important things are that what is black carbon? Black carbon is because of the incomplete combustion of fossil fuels and biomass. Second is that it is short lived as compared to CO2. It can absorb more energy as compared to CO2. And fourth point is that it is the second largest contributor to climate change after CO2 and India is the second largest emitter of black carbon. Taliban attacks Afghan bases throwing peace talks in doubt. So on 29th of February, a peace deal was signed between USA and Taliban in Doha in Qatar. Taliban is a group of Afghanistan. So as per this peace agreement, USA is going to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan and Taliban need to make sure that the land of Afghanistan is not used for the terrorist activities. There are few other important points of this deal. One is that prisoner exchange. That means Taliban who have captured the personnel of Afghan security forces, they are going to hand over these back to the government. On the other hand, government is also going to hand over certain prisoners. However, because of this attacks by the Taliban, now there are questions about the validity of this US Taliban deal. Next one is and this is going to be the last topic of our today's discussion. It is about Lake Sukhna. So recently the Punjab and Haryana High Court declared this Lake Sukhna of Chandigarh as the living entity and it ordered the demolition of structures in the catchment area of this Lake Sukhna. So you just need to Remember that it is situated in Chandigarh. So these were the important articles of today's newspaper. If this video was helpful, please share it. 
Thank you and that's all for the day.